All right. Hey, everyone. How are you guys doing? I'm here with Jeff Booth. And um, Jeff, let's just kick this thing off. You had commented. I, I sent out a, the typical message asking people to comment. I think we got, I don't know how many uh, questions for you. <laughs> But you had made the comment that the first time we chatted, Bitcoin was at 9,500. The second time we chatted, it was at 17,000. Tonight, as we're recording this, it's at 68,000. When is this thing going to stop? Is it going to stop? What's what's coming here? (laughs) Forever, Laura. (laughs) Forever, Laura. Uh, Yeah, it's not going to stop. So so anyway, this is... For the people that have seen this for a long time, you being one of those people, you can um, you can kind of see what's happening, and it's I think it's just bringing more attention to the space over and over again. All of the existing system failing um, is bringing more attention to what's really going on, and and that's driving that's driving this this as well. Yeah. So uh, let's talk some of the qualitative narratives because. A year ago, when we were having this conversation, um, what were some of the things that you kind of anticipated playing out, like businesses putting it on their balance sheet or whatever that might have been? And has it exceeded that expectation that you would have had, call it a year ago, um, to where we're, where we are today? Or um, is this kind of where you expected this thing to run? Yeah, it's it's funny. You obviously can't tell the daily movements or what's going to happen there. Actually, I remember you saying um, at that time, "This is going to run into the in in um, into the new year." I think your prediction on what it would be in price point was right on the money um, at that time. So, but if you talk about the big macro struggle that were the big the, the big forces, which were kind of predicted in my book and predicted out of this is you have technology that's trying to drive prices down moving exponentially and you have monetary easing or 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 inflation or central banking trying to stop that from happening because if that happens the entire system resets through a deflationary spiral and so through that lens of those two giant forces one trying to save our time one trying to to make everything price more and, and waste our time. You see the great human tragedy tragedy of, of what's, hap- what's happening. But the problem is there's no way out of the existing system. And, and, and when we talk about the inflation deflation debate and everything else, it, I think what's lost on people is the inflation debate is, is a non-free market debate. The free market yeah. is inflationary period. And everybody that's talking about inflation is really is, is saying, well, we're going to have to inflation. They're right, because there's no other way to, to save the system. If central banks stop printing or didn't even, ex- they, if they, if they, um, they have to accelerate the printing. They have to do more over time, over time. And if they stop, if they stop or slow, you're going to tip into deflationary spiral. And those are uh, so. So those are some pretty big macro trends that are fighting each other, and we're all. What ends up happening is most people measure the system by the system. So that because it's because the system is responsible for everything around them. Their GDP, housing prices, food prices, everything else. Their their wages. And they they can't even see that they're stuck into a system. Um, no. Everything's just reinforcing that system. So so system changes never come, typically never come from the inside. The system the system doesn't change itself from the inside. It's imposed from the outside. That's what technology does. Is it lowers the cost so so dramatically, um, or 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 changes the narrative so dramatically that people adopt a new system. And so that's what that's what's happening. That's what's happening through the lens of Bitcoin today. I think that when I look around at what is the really, really big thing that's just shining a flashlight on all of this, almost like we're looking in the house for the cockroaches and we shine the light in the corner and they're just spewing out. And the thing that I think that that is, is the supply chain. I think the supply chain is illuminating um, 
And I think it's just starting to illuminate what is about to just unfold into this nasty, nasty looking thing. Um, you know, they're getting CPI prints over 5% here in the U S for six, seven months now straight. Um, and the projection and the trend is demonstrating that it's going to get worse or at least hold that 5%. So what are your thoughts on that idea? Yeah. And, 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 and I try not to, so all of these, um, I, I look at it pretty simply when you have misinformation and money, or it, so you essentially have theft of a base layer of money or misinformation and money that must, must create more inf- misinformation in money because it's not the free market. It's the opposite of the free market. Then as a byproduct of that, you must have greater inf- misinformation everywhere. And that control of that message, that control of that misinformation, central banks are losing control of that narrative. Yes, because, because what's happening is, is the more that that happens, there never used to be an escape valve. So if you look at gold, they could, when that used to happen, they could impose financial repression by grabbing all the gold because it needed to be centralized and forcing that inflation, which is a destruction of your time or savings on society. So through financial repression, they essentially hold you in the country all your assets and the they well, re- reprice it, everything else. That's, that's not able to happen today. And so the more that this, and, and, and with social media and more voices on the internet, there's more people, the signal is showing through that noise. So as you create, create more misinformation, that it's just driving clarity to the signal. Voices like you, me, many uh, others that have been preaching this for a long time, what's, ha- what's happening. And, and, and that's actually what's happening with Bitcoin is it's, it's more of an emergent phenomenon. And every single person, for every single voice that joins and understands what's happening, once you see it, you can't unsee it. And so that emergent phenomenon is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And, and no matter- It's not it's, linear. <laughs> Exactly. It's a network effect that you could look at every one of us as almost a node in the system. Yeah. That makes it, that, that, and, and some of us actual nodes in the system, <laughs> with, with, uh, <laughs> right? But, uh, but, but, um, but as a node in the system, making the entire thing stronger, that's really hard to stop. So when you think about supply chain issues and all of this, you, uh, you, these are tiny, they're not tiny, but they're, they're predictable patterns out of manipulating money that are bound to accelerate. So what would, what would happen if supply chains start to impact food? Which they will, right? Yeah. So, so then governments will con- try to control food, regulatory capture or different things to be able to, to lower the cost of food or to, to make sure that they're not resp- at risk of supply chains. So you just have a breaking of all the rules all over the, all over the world. And at the same time, and I'm on some technology food boards, you have, you have technology that's lowering the cost of food in real time that's being allowed to be able to localize that food, give more for less. And so, so you're driving, and, and that more for less is deflation. Well, and, that, and I think this is an important part, Jeff. That more for less is dependent on technology to supply it, right? <laughs> And so when we talk about the erosion of supply chains and we talk about the complex parts that are required to manifest this technological leap in productivity that is happening everywhere, and you're talking specifically about food, but when you start breaking down the supply chain and the, at the lowest level commodity is starting to break because of a weather pattern and you had just in time... Uh, optimization of of deliveries, right? Uh, with all your Lean Six Sigma that's been optimized throughout every ounce of these supply chains. But when you get to the when you get up to the top of that supply chain and you start talking about complex parts and technological parts, just computer boards, and you're seeing it in cars and things like, and there's things way more complex than that. Um, if there's starting to be delays there and they've become accustomed to it always functioning perfectly and always being able to get it just in time with you know 
uh, Six Sigma, and all of a sudden there's there starts to be a few delays here, then there, and then everywhere else in the supply chain. Um, all of a sudden your costs start manifesting themselves, yeah. and they there start is- man they start manifesting in a way that the Fed can't control that. And there's a time lag there. And then what ends up happening? And, and it, it, one of the things is if you think about systems, yeah, um, you sacrifice, what, what ends up happening is systems that you centralize get more and more um, unstable. So you, so you sacrifice uh, for a long time and you keep doing it. And if you try to take out the, the, the kind of changes in that and you keep on centralizing, they get more unstable. So if you think about this in supply chains for chips, for example, you're exactly right. But what do you think will happen as a result of this? It, it is people now know this risk and, you, and because of the price rising and the, and the shortage, you're, you're going to have a whole bunch of more, more localized um, in fact, decentralization of that so that you avoid, avoid that risk. And with technology, again, you're able to do that. Mm-hmm. So there's there's for sure impacts in the short term before and, and some of these impacts on let's say chip manufacturers that takes a long time to spin up um, and um, so so those impacts can go on for a lot longer but the long, well, and, the, and then you, and then you're seeing governments trying to okay well we need more chips so let's manufacture that so let's just throw a bunch of money at it let's let's build more than what we probably need let's overreact to it. And then you're just throwing further perturbations in the supply demand curve for that one specific thing. But you, then they're doing it across the board for everything because um, but they're but just again, all, the, all those things that you're doing and just think about any business, any thing that's doing this is actually imposing more deflation. Yeah. Right. Which it would, because everything is moving to a digital infrastructure, which is imposing. Now that might not come tomorrow. It might come later on, but you're imposing and you're printing more money to impose more deflation. So you're trying to push prices up and never remember when I talked about, I've talked about this many times, but I don't know if it's specifically in my book, when I predicted a hundred or when I said, looking back over the last 20 years, we've had $185 trillion of, of stimulus to grow the economy, $46 trillion. Yeah. Yeah. But that's looking backwards on technology. And that's to offset what we've been talking about for the last 20 years, essentially pushing prices up. And where has that money gone to? Education, housing prices, all of the, so it created distortions and essentially it's Robin Hood in reverse. You steal from the middle class and poor and give to the rich. There's less and less people at the top and more and more people at the bottom. You can see what ends up happening to society as a result of that. Now, but the, the biggest the, the part is, and, and I think this is where, where, where the book kind of predicted this future. The biggest part was most of the deflation is in front of us. And, and so, and, and, and when I talk about deflation in that, I'm talking about a, a system change to a different world, right? What Bitcoin would allow, allow us to do. But most of the inflation, the deflation is in front of us and it's a good thing for humanity. It's a terrible thing for our existing monetary system. So what can we expect just because those trends are moving in opposite directions and each one is reinforcing the other? We can expect way more easing. We can expect it has to offset, uh, has to offset. And that more easing or that more misinformation creates more misinformation and havoc everywhere in the world. And it is the, for a long time, it's been the central thing driving just about every other conversation that nobody's talking about. Now, you and I have talked about how um, the speed at which this transition takes place, the, the more drawn out or smooth that, that we can make that transition, not that we have any control over it, um, <laughs> the better for humanity. Um, but history has, has demonstrated that when trust erodes in a currency, it typically plays out pretty fast. And even though that might not be the scenario that you and I both want, um, if I was going to put probabilities on one or the other, I'm putting the higher probability on it actually playing out faster than, than what many expect. Um, what, does that, what does that mean for... 
for it's, it's, labor? What does that mean for for just people trying to stay employed? Because I mean, you're you're going to have all these zombie companies that we all know are out there that have been kept alive for decades um, finally come to the realization that uh, the game's over, the jig's up. It's way it's, so. It's way more complicated. We'll get into that. So it's, it's that and and a whole bunch. So just think about the incongruence in our own thinking, right? So in one sense, we want our housing to go up forever. We believe our housing will go up forever and we'll leave our housing. We don't want that to go down, but it's only gone up over the last 20 years because we've stimulated economies by $185 trillion. And we know it'll fall precipitously if that stimulus doesn't keep coming. We know if stimulus does keep coming, um, then it ends in concentration of all power in very few hands and regulatory capture. That's what and it, 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 U.S. looks like China. That's uh, and, 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 and you have. And when I say very few hands, imagine where technology takes us with artificial intelligence um, and and what people will do to stand up to dictatorship today. Very few people will stand up to that. Um, because because if you stand up to it, you get killed. Right? Think Navalny in Russia, um, or, or you, uh, you get per- persecuted. And so now think of who should have power, who should have domain over everybody with a- AI, and would that person change their mind? So if you think about that path, that's where the existing system takes us. Or if if you believe that we should live in a world that you manipulate money. This is without Bitcoin in the picture. Without Bitcoin, without Bitcoin in the picture. If you, but but actually, so or if Bitcoin didn't win, I know it's it's going to win. It's I think it's inevitable. But it's but if Bitcoin didn't win, and why there would be a whole bunch of if I was controlling, if I was if I was that person, and I wanted that, then I would try to create a whole bunch of misinformation as well. And even if I didn't, um, I might not even know how bad that took us. Right. I just I might just be reacting to a system and trying to make sure that the, the system didn't collapse because I feared the system collapse would be worse. But that's where that system takes us. Um, and that's a very dystopian world that, that doesn't have a high probability of, uh, uh, of happening, but nonetheless, it has, doesn't have a zero probability of happening. Um, and that's probably my biggest reason for Bitcoin. Um, besides truth, honestly, fair rules, everything else. But that, that's probably, uh, if I said the top stat, that's probably. But now think about that system today. And it, now we'll go into the other side. Kind of, and Bitcoin accelerates today. T- tomorrow, currencies collapse, Bitcoin accelerates and everything else. And Bitcoin's done. There would be no food on the shelves. There would be there would be societal breakdown completely. Um, it, it would it would and, and you would have dictators emerge into that um, into that in a different uh, in a different capacity, and it would not it might not be good for Bitcoin. Maybe in the end, I don't think anything would change it, but uh, but it wouldn't it sure wouldn't be good for people. So. So I like to think about Bitcoin here, and, and this is this is why. Um, and, and through a company lens, I like to think about it like like this. Um, what really smart companies do, and it's super rare, the really great monopolies do, is they transition themselves, but they know they can't transition themselves from the inside. So they set up a, re- a separate lab that tries to compete against the company. And that separate lab is typically then super secretive because if anybody knows in the existing company that, uh, that it's a, trans- a network transfer to the new company, the, 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 the new company gets killed be- before because there's just so much inertia in, it in the existing company. So a good example of this would be Apple and the iPhone. I have to run the existing company well, I take out what the company is moving to into a separate, separate uh, uh, secret facility to be able to, to, uh, to run that. Steve Jobs was great at that. And then as that transitions, it moves everything to the new company. 
So it allows you to run one while you move the vision vision forward. Central banks can't do that. For central, that's really difficult for, for central banks, especially globally interconnected central banks. It's really difficult. But, but what this would look like, uh, or another example, imagine, imagine Amazon starts in 99, or sorry, 95, I guess, 96. Amazon starts in 95, and it is just sell books. And in 2000, all retail stores collapse. Just imagine they all collapse, and Amazon doesn't sell very many things yet. Where would you get your groceries? Where would you get your everything else? So if you think about that lens, today we're living in this system, measuring the system. Bitcoin is emerging and it's, it, it, it's emerging really quickly. Layer two, taproot integration, everything else that's gonna to happen to, still to come. But if it happened right now, you don't have, an, that network transfer hasn't happened enough that, that you could kind of build a bridge to the other side. And what's happening, which is what I'm super excited about with layer two, with everything else, is and that's uh, is you're building the bridge to the other side. And yes, the people that are in early have more of the opportunity in it, of course, just like the people that were in early in, in Amazon. If you held it at $5 and went all the way up instead of selling along the way, you have way more of the opportunity in that because it's a network transfer from one system to another. But that those bridges or link need to be, uh, it, which is happening. Um, it, and, and what gives me hope on that is the sp speed of which it's happening and innovation moving now to, to, to the Bitcoin rails and what's happening, what's happening there in the ecosystem. Companies, countries <laughs> in, in the ecosystem and people are starting to build to it. And so that accelerates. And, and what a lot of people do, a lot of most people, is they predict the present forward. They don't predict the future. They, they predict they won't change. Everything else changes around them, but they don't change. Their minds don't change. And so what's happening right now is Bitcoin's doing that and changing minds and moving more and more people. And, and hopefully that happens at, at a rate that you can have that bridge. So is five years enough time for this bridge that you're referring to? Yeah, so I, I, it might happen faster than that. It, uh, the, when, when you say hyper-Bitcoinization, uh, it's the rail, it's a, second, it's a second layer that it could operate at as a currency. It's going to be important because when things collapse violently, you need something to move to. Yeah. Yeah, in, in, in your first example where you were talking more about the dystopian uh, where the, the power and the buying power and the control is being manifested into a smaller and smaller group of hands, uh, what I find interesting about Bitcoin is um, you, you do have the opposite of that because most people are dead up to their eyeballs with their real estate. And if you do go through something like this and they start receiving a salary in Bitcoin, all of a sudden it gets really easy to start making payments on the house and, and basically take ownership of all that equity, uh, which I think is, is by contract distributed pretty uh, amongst all the people across, at least in the United States. I'm, I'm assuming most of the rest of the world is, is kind of similar to the United States with respect to people having a contract that says that they own their house, even though most of the, most of the debt on the house is owned by the bank, um, they do own that equity. And that would be a windfall um, for most of these people if we went through some type of transition. And I mean, there's, there's your effective quote unquote debt jubilee as far as I'm concerned. That's true. It, it, but, but if you said, it said the, the lower class or the middle and lower class, many of them don't own their own their own the house they're, they're renting they're renting and the prices of the rents are going up prices of food are going up and everything else and a lot of those people believe that it's capitalism that's created that yeah and it's and the Boy. free market that's created that so, <laughs> and, 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 and that's actually why we have to be careful um yeah. when, I, when i say this we have to understand other people's what what they might go through and to get to come to that belief because it's a complete opposite of capitalism or free market that is yeah. opposed. 
it is a distortion of markets that impose that and it hurts those people. But those two people most left out. When I said we don't understand how much our own minds will change and how much we'll when you when I saw a question that was answered, people talk about what happened in Germany and everything else. I don't think about Hitler specifically when I think about Germany. I think about the millions of people that changed their mind and said that was okay to do to other people or didn't stand up and say that's wrong. And then I think we're the same meat sacks today. We're not, yeah. we're, so, so if that could happen to people be, uh, before and we think that it couldn't happen to us, then, then very few people can, can stand up to that type of pressure. So you have that type of pressure that's being imposed on, on society out of, this, out of this inflationary policy. You're creating a whole bunch of these people who believe it's capitalism, free market, and everything else, and it's those people's fault that they did that. Yeah. And they believe it. And so, so can you imagine a dictator stepping in to ignite that? And, and I can and so if you keep running this, this system, that's actually what, that, that's what, that, that's the, the worry. It, it turns pretty dystopian pretty fast. And, and with the technology, it just gets more and more and more so. So for, for, for a quick look, go look. So people will look at the, the Boston Robotics 10 years ago. And if you looked at that 10 years ago, you would have never predicted what it is today. So just look at the videos 10 years ago versus today and see what that, that, that's done. And, but, but then they'll have an anchor in their mind about the robot dog and, and backflipping humanoid. And they'll think, oh, that's what it'll look 10 years from now. And it won't look anything like that. The rate of this progress is staggering. And, and so, so when you think about these, uh, th these things, that rate of progress is job destroying. It re removes, if, if you think about where AI is going, where robots with, can do a whole bunch of stuff, miniaturize everything else, where it's job destroying. And if you try to artificially prop up jobs by printing money, you just concentrate all power in, in few hands. And so as the jobs get destroyed, the prices have to fall to match or, or, it's, or it looks pretty, and then again, this is unfortunately true. Well, it's fortunately true because we're living in a transition that because of Bitcoin can get us to the other side. How do you guard against the scenario that you described as far as you, you could see how leaders could emerge that could, uh, this is probably the bad phrasing, but Hitler-like uh, throughout the world. What, what is, how, how, do, uh, how does humanity guard against something like that is it just knowledge and dissemination of that knowledge yeah so uh so it's it's people like you it's people like me talking about it. it's people it was so and the whole bunch of people in the bitcoin community are 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 trying to bring more people on because because it's that important and so it is it is knowledge what gives me hope in this it, hope in this and that's why i try to be sometimes I have to check myself too, because when somebody says something just ignorant, um, <laughs> and you hear it, I'm way more guilty than you, Jeff, <laughs> but you hear it a hundred times, a hundred thousand times you hear it over and over and over again. You just go like, you can't be that dense. Like, <laughs> you cannot be that dense or you, you must check your bias or your privilege or something. And I want to say it, I want to scream it, but I realize, okay, would I help the cause by doing it? Um, and 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 so and 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 it doesn't it can't hurt me. Like, so they're not. I just care more about the other people that it might impact. That's what I. That so I try to stay pretty level headed on that whole conversation because I because I don't want to. I need I wanna, to take your advice, Jeff. <laughs> hey, you don't need to take anyone's advice. Everybody comes to Bitcoin in their own way. And you have brought more people on than through through inviting me on, through inviting a whole bunch of other people. It's so and, frustrating, though. It gets so frustrating. I mean, it's it like there's times when you just want to just scream. I mean, the stupidity that's out there, and some yeah. of the things that are being. I mean, 
Did you see the CNBC post? They deleted it, thank God, but they were they literally published an article on why higher inflation is good. That was like the title of the article. Like what insanity are we living in? And and like I retweeted it and I said, who is paying for this? Like what you, is going but, but again, that that system must must create more information. And as a result of the more information must create more regulatory capture and more concentration of control. Yes. Yeah. Must. yeah. It's, a, it's just a system problem and, and whether you're in the system. And so, so one of the things that's probably most, uh, I just tune them out, but the people that, that are, that, that, that essentially know their, know, know it's a wrong, know it's that, and, and will advocate for the system anyways. So those, yeah. those people, I do, it's just, okay, block or ignore. And I don't block very many people, but there's, there, 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 uh, there's a couple there that I just, okay. Um, but, but again, that's just, we have to expect that. We have to expect. Yeah, yeah. And, and then the good news, the really good news is the more you lie when the truth is out there, as long as you don't control all the airwaves, more people find the truth. Yes. So more information gets people searching for the truth. And so you have, you have this chaos today, what feels like chaos as, as one system we're like is throwing everything against this because it needs to. And more people are finding it in their own way through, through this. And my hope is, and that's what you're seeing in the price. Price is rising because of that emergent phenomenon and more people finding it and holding it. So a little bit more on the supply chain dichotomy with interest rates. So we've got the 10 year. I, hmm. I think it's at like 1.5%, somewhere in that range. And we've got CPI at 5.5 or 4 or whatever it is. And that's, that's if you buy and believe that CPI is at, <laughs> so like that's that's giving it the benefit of the doubt. Like you can't you can't even hide that anymore. And so you got nearly a four hundred basis point negative spread. And I've been I've been asking everybody that comes on the show recently this question, but I think it's 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 such an important question because you just can't hide the fact that every single bond, every bond on the planet. I mean, we're talking hundreds of trillions of dollars. 130 trillion, I think, is total, yeah. Is negative yielding. Yep, every every one. one of them in yep. on a real basis. But by the way, we talked about this. I whether we talked about it on your show a year and a half ago, or uh, or if it was afterwards, we talked about this very issue. And we said, and we and, and I remember talking that their structure, they're all they're all effectively going to zero if you could impose financial repression if you could the, for the people that stay there they're going to get killed killed 100 percent impairment 100 percent impairment oh, 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 over time but you can't impose financial repression because then there's a, an escape valve in bitcoin that's what's happening so before yeah. in, in the world before you could impose that close your borders or whatever or or, or lock up all the gold force that on society and pay back the debt in cheaper dollars and start, start again. U.S. imposed that in the 30s. To, uh, to, uh, um, yeah. But at that time, U.S. was kind of the one and only kind of rising power, right, at, at the time. And they had a bunch of gold to be able to do that. It, the U.S. looks different today. So they can't play that same, same trick. And there's Bitcoin. Yeah. So, so as more people realize what's happening, if you're on zero right now, if you're on zero allocation to Bitcoin and you're all, all in the existing system, I don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. Hey, so I was listening to a Ray Dalio interview that I think happened just like in the last week or two. And uh, Andrew Sorkin was hitting him pretty hard on Bitcoin specifically. And uh, it was like, hey, Ray, you own Bitcoin, this and that. And the the thing that really caught my attention and just kind of like, made me like my eyebrow went up. He, um, he says, what do you think about, you know, it's, it's too big now, but governments can't ban it. 
in races. No, 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 no. I see it. Actually, the exact opposite of that. I see it that um, it's actually gotten easier for them to ban it. And then he gave like this, like really didn't give a response as to why. And I was just like, that is the uh, boy, oh boy, do I disagree with you, but maybe it's because of where I sit. And I'm just kind of curious to hear your thoughts. I, I wish I could just play the clip for you because yeah, it, well, just, think, it made think, my, I was like, what? I think that's nonsense. Now, yeah. Yeah, I think there are some things that we need to think about in the transition to the other side. If you, if you had a whole bunch of Bitcoin in, on exchanges, or if you had um, concentrated amounts of Bitcoin, I think that would be easier. But as a decentralized people holding their own keys, why that's in, so uh, so important? I think that's virtually, How? <laughs> virtually impossible. And and again, one of the things when and, and Ray's a smart guy, um, but. When you, th when you think about public figures who are trying to drive a different agenda, think about Ray investing in China. And, and, and when you're trying to, you, when you have a fund that, that is that large and you're trying to outperform other markets and you're taking big bets and think, I can't imagine. Not an easy job. <laughs> I, can't I, don't, I can't imagine what his portfolio looks like in China. Yeah. With when 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 you know when I said regulatory capture is as the government goes after some of the tech companies and changes because they have to. Yeah. Um, it, there is no free market. You're in a manipulated market, and so now Ray has a whole bunch of his investor okay capital and, and everything else in a market that that his voice needs to be pro system and or or. It, um, or I, I can understand why it is because Bitcoin unwinds a whole bunch of those trades. Yeah. Um, and uh, and, and I, I, for the, if, if I do not get why he couldn't, he, he wouldn't be more in, even as a, even as a protection against what, what he's got on the risk on risk on, on the other side. But, uh, but, but I do understand kind of the bias that takes place when you're in a system, you measure the system from the system. Yeah. You know, we, we were talking about interest rates. So you're seeing, uh, in general, the, the market is selling off. The bond market is selling off. You're seeing yields coming up pretty precipitously. Uh, federal funds rate still sitting down at zero, nothing percent. But you're seeing the rest of the, the bond yield curve uh, selling off and rates are coming up and um you know this is a little different than what we've seen for the last 40 years with how this plays out typically the central banks will come in oh we're raising rates and then th then there'll be a little bit of a sell off throughout the the curve and this time um they're still saying hey we're whole, we're going to stay down here at zero and the in the rest of the curve is selling off yeah so so they have to and they have to do yield control, control, and they have to do more easing, and they have to. So anything that they say, yeah, and what the free market uh, says, and the, the free market can't push up rates, um, it, because because there will be beyond a certain point. Yeah, beyond, <laughs> beyond, yeah, because governments have to step in. Why? Pretty easy to see. That whole mirage of growth forever. Is just manipulated money, and, but the worst part about that, that manipulated money isn't actually money sitting in the bank account. It's just a credit-based system. And so if you let that, all that manipulation of money, that credit-based system that's expanded way out of touch contract, it, the whole thing resets. And it, that counterparty risk, that contagion goes across the world and you have a reset through a different, different type of reset. So, so that's a, through that lens, you can see for sure all across the globe, there's going to be more print and, so, and more yield control. So plan B myself and you were talking with uh, Peter McCormick and we were, and P I think Peter asked us about whether another March, 2020 liquidity shock could happen in the markets. And if so, would Bitcoin go down? And I think all three, you know, all three of us were like, yep, it's going to go down if something like that plays out again. Um, describe this a little bit more from your vantage point. 
And um, do you see another shock to the system where basically the economy throws a, a fit and there's impairment, you know, across yeah. all this all this credit? So, so again, an analogy for first in in a in in unstable markets, we know there's greater and greater. We're building more and more greater instability in a market all over the place. And, and everybody's looking for which snowflake is gonna cause the avalanche, right? And measuring the snowflakes doesn't much matter, right? The avalanche is coming and it could come in a number of different ways. My hope is the avalanche comes in, in a position that Bitcoin is further enough along kind of on that, that you, can, you can transition, but that's so before it takes the entire system down. Normally the taking the system down happens through it, when I said we change our minds, we elect leaders who dic- there will be dictators and then change, we change our minds to follow those. We change our minds following them right into war. And that's how the change normally comes. We get controlled through that. It's somebody else's fault. We go to war. We reset a currency through, uh, through war. Victor resets currency, starts over again. Um, so the, my hope is Bitcoin allows that not to happen. But um, if, if you had, let's just use the example before, if you had deflation, if you allowed that to happen, if, go, if governments didn't keep printing and you started, it started to have deflation, then you'd have a credit unwind you'd have, and it just everything would keep unwinding and governments would be forced to come in and essentially nationalize their banks, save their banks and everything else. Otherwise you would have what hap- is happening in Lebanon right now. Banks would close, people couldn't get their money, you couldn't get to, and what would your housing look like in that environment? What would your price of your housing be? What would this, what would this street look like? What would it look like, like walking down the street? Imagine that catastrophe in what that, that could look like. But if you allowed deflation to happen, that's what would, uh, would happen. Um, because it would keep, it would keep on, on unwinding. In that event, for a while, US dollar would get really strong because people would hoard it. Um, and, and, and Bitcoin might fall for, a, uh, for some time because what would happen in that a, a event is um, people would sell whatever they had to be able to, to they'd, sell back, they'd sell their best assets because they'd have to sell something to, to, to get money. So in that event, in that type of co- collapse, you could expect a short-term correction in Bitcoin. I want to just uh, explain something for people that are hearing this. The reason that the Jeff made the comment that the dollar would bid and that you'd have a run on dollars in this scenario is because most of of what is quote unquote money people refer to as money in the system is credit itself. Um, you know, I don't know what percent, but Jeff, what is it like three fourths of it is is credit? More than that. It's it's all more credit. Than that. There, yeah. yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's it, we live so, in a credit based system. And so, since most of all of it is credit, in very a very small proportion of it is actual monetary baseline dollars in the system. When you start getting into this this impairment of credit, like let's say I owe Jeff a thousand dollars and then he owes another person a thousand dollars. If I can't pay him the thousand dollars, well, now all of a sudden he can't pay the other person a thousand dollars because what was an asset to him that was a liability to me um, became impaired. And so when most of the system is made up of these, these agreements, that were created out of thin air that aren't actually backed by real dollars that, that I can uh, produce on the spot. Um, as each person calls the next person saying, hey, I want my thousand bucks. Uh, I'm sorry, I have to sell something in order to come up with it. And then or in order to pay you back, that's all the counterparty risk, the, the buzzword that you hear a lot of us say from time to time. So that's that uh, cascading of selling is due to the fundamental nature of fractional reserve banking um, and the system at hand. And, so, yeah, and thanks for doing that, Preston, because because I think a lot of people don't realize that, and that function is what requires you to grow forever. Yes. That function, because if you have contraction, which deflation would happen, that counterparty risk 
happens overnight and it keeps on and it unwinds. So a whole bunch of people that defend the monetary system today, what they're defending is a credit-based system that must grow forever through inflation. Um, and, and it cannot, it cannot be congruent with to where technology is taking us. That system cannot work with it. And so the, so the, what ends up happening is that system must concentrate all control as a byproduct to fighting the free market. And so, and, so those, that, that, and that, and that becomes a system change. And a very real example, I knew that the U S was going to, to bail out the financial system in 2008, even though it, though it uh, created, uh, even though it broke the free market rules, capitalism, everything else. Um, but, but I knew that was going to happen. We had at the time probably tens of millions of dollars in the bank. Um, we had it, letters of credit in my former company, letters of credit all over the world um, and trade going on with containers all over the world. And other ba banks wouldn't accept our money, wouldn't accept our LC. Why? Because they thought our bank was insolvent too. And so, so the trade for four days stopped, nothing. We couldn't, we couldn't figure it out. We couldn't. And, and so when we talk about how interconnected this system is, um, if U.S. didn't come in there, the, the thing would have imploded at that time. And so, 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 but that coming in there creates a bigger problem for capitalism itself because then it turns into crony, crony capitalism and it doesn't allow, allow the natural clearing of cycles and it enriches all the people who create the, who, who lever up and create the problem at the expense of the people uh, at, the, at the bottom. And so, but where we are in the cycle, it's just accelerated and it will accelerate more. So that's, that's just the hard reality. Of, and that's why you need a system change from a new system. All right. I want to talk about the valuation process of equities, but in a hyper Bitcoinization world. So when I look at large cap equities today, I can't buy them because I can't get around the math because I'm of the opinion that on the other side of, of this thing, this black hole we're being sucked into, um, the interest rates or whatever, whatever we would determine risk-free rates to be, I have no idea what that is. Is that going to be the lightning network? that's determining that i don't know but but my if i had to guess today and boy oh boy i don't have a whole lot of confidence in this guess but if i had to guess that's what i would guess it is um but let's just say whatever that is i just don't see it being the the interest rates that we have today i think that this call it the 10 year treasury at 1.5% is a total mirage of what a risk-free rate cost of capital should be. And if true, then the, the 200 basis point premium that's put on top of that for the, for the price of equity is ludicrous. Yeah. And, and so I'm, I'm curious what you think about this. And then like, what would, what would a real interest rate look like on the other side of this? So, so we've already talked about it through a different lens, the bond market. Yeah. Right? And, and the equity market is just a smaller version. So, so, so you're exactly right. If you, if you believe, um, if you believe that uh, this system is going to keep going on forever, then, then some of that, some of those technology companies will still do really well forever. And yeah. so, and so, so will some of the resource uh, companies. But will they be capitalized at the rate that? But that that it, it's all determined on a mirage. That's right. So, so everything. So, and that's why it's so hard for people to see because they're living in a world that's really a make believe world out yeah. of who gets to press the button and how much money and how much uh, how much button pressing do I do to destroy people's time. Like press a button, destroy forty years of labor, or, or time, because all money is is a trade of our time. Yeah, and so, 
so it's all on a make-believe world that you can hold down interest rates forever and we can we can have as much money um, as we want. And that's kind of the, and I've said it probably on your show before too, but you either have abundance and money and scarcity everywhere else or scarcity and money and abundance everywhere else. That's the choice. So your, your question in the, in the so it is really a dependent question. How long can the mirage keep going on? Yeah. Right. And, and there's a whole bunch of people that believe it'll go on for a long time. And there's a whole bunch of people like you and I that think, <laughs> why, am I, why, am I, why do I want to live in that world? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to measure my world in Bitcoin and see the truth and see what's happening. Well, it's, so it's even affected like how I'm looking at mining stocks. So in, in anything in the sector, right? Because if, if those are priced at a multiple of 35, right? Um, and I believe that we're going to have actual free and open interest rates in the future. Um, not to mention they're completely correlated to the price of Bitcoin, but it comes with operational risk and execution yeah. risk yeah. and, uh, derivative exposure to, you know, energy <laughs> prices and all this other stuff that these, that these people have to expertly manage. So those two factors you know, it's like, hey, I'm getting the same performance as Bitcoin, but it comes with all these other risk factors. Plus, it's coming at a 35, a PE of 35. And my expectation is maybe interest rates might be 5, 10, 15% on the other side of this, which is going to compress the PE ratios. So, like, why in the world would I own equity, even if they're putting Bitcoin on the balance sheet today? It's hard yeah. for me to get around the math. And, and, and the interesting thing, Preston, with, with, with you, for, because you came at this through a different lens, you came at it as a, as a value investor. Yes, I did. Um, and the beautiful thing about that lens as a value investor, you're looking for those mispricing opportunities and that real value and, and taking advantage of that. And I think what happened with you um, is you realized everything's mispriced. Everything's manipulated. Everything's mispriced. Everything's manipulated. <laughs> The entire thing, the entire stack is manipulated and that manipulation is creating a whole bunch of damage. And, and I came in it through a different lens. I came in it through technology is moving this way. This is why everything's manipulated. Yeah. Because it must be to save the system. Yes. And, um, but that value investor lens gives you a really like, why are people making this, this choice? Because it seems like the, the, if they think they're, 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 um, they're being responsible fiduciaries and everything else. And from, uh, um, but they're actually incurring more risk. Yeah. I, I can't understand it. And it just kind of blows my mind. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, how about, how about UBI? So we've seen a little bit of this uh, to date. Um, I think you could maybe, maybe make the argument that them uh, redistributing the, t the, uh, the child care benefits and things like that on a monthly basis. And then they were talking about like, Hey, you know, maybe we'll just continue that. Maybe you'll even get the, the tax credit at the end of the year. I mean, this is really kind of like very mild UBI in my opinion. And um, I suspect it's, it's going to continue and maybe even accelerate moving forward. And I'm just kind of curious to hear your thoughts on how you think some of that might progress. Yeah, your monopoly analogy, my monopoly analogy from before, those are exactly. But, but, but no, 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 no. I'm just saying that. But you're, you're, you actually did a really good job on yours, where you said people need to know the context. So uh, I did. So Jeff had a post on this. I actually stole this from Ray Dalio. I don't know how many years ago he he had some speech he was doing, and I I brought it up on the show a couple of times, and then you had an excellent post on it. Well, then I was there talking with Jay the other night, and then somebody in the comments was like, y'all are stealing this from somebody else. And Jeff's like, no, it has nothing to do with us. We don't care. Like, We just think it's a good analogy, and people need to kind of like understand what's happening. But anyway. So no, it's, it's actually probably worth investigating that a little bit because I don't care. I don't um, care. I know. So I'm with you. I actually don't care what one I order. It doesn't <laughs> need to be my stuff. If something's and just so for everybody to know, to know that's listening to this, if it helps bring more people to understanding, steal it. 
And yes. I don't care. It's not about me. It's about, it, it's about, uh, and, and so. I, I want to give a shout out really fast. And then I want to get back to the Saifedean, a moose. He, with his book, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin standard came out, published it pr- on, on print. You can buy it on Amazon. You know what else he did? He just put it on a PDF. He said, everybody steal it. Take it. Love that. It's for, it's for the taking. And you know what? I don't think it hurt his book sales at all. If anything, I think it might have helped it because people are reading the PDF and they're like, "Hey, I want to, I want to go buy this awesome book." And uh, but what what a just a generous thing to do to help people and just put the word out there. Hey, this is what it's all about. And and I know you feel the exact same way. I feel the exact same way. Anyway, yeah. go ahead. With the, no, no, with but the that's note. actually why this is. But you're so what ends up happening? We don't know. A lot of times we're, we're something will come into our mind. We're thinking somebody will say something, and we'll sleep on it. We don't even know where we heard it. Yeah, it comes in and it comes it's in. True. And, and all of a sudden, it's now in our consciousness, and we put a slight tweak to that, and we think we came up with the idea. We don't know where we. Yeah. So 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 that's actually why the the. It, it, you don't, and, and the good thing about that is when you do what we do, you don't even know how much impact you have on other people. You yeah. could never, you could never know over, over time. And hopefully that's a positive impact over time. Now this monopoly analogy is going into it. <laughs> so, like, but, but what I liked about what I really liked about your version was you said, first, they give you $200 when you go around the board. Um, and then the prices go up and everybody keeps the assets and the assets keep rising and then you can't get around the board um, and then they give you 400 and that you can't credit around the board so they give you 600. That isn't the way to solve the system, the problem. Mm-mm. That just concentrates wealth and control in a very few hands faster. Um, and it pushes it, what we've talked about a lot to it pushes essentially um, slavery. Mm-hmm. to wide portions of the population. Independency. Exactly, and independent, um, and, and, and removes individual rights and freedoms through that same thing. Through, uh, um, it's kind of modern day slavery for a job that you can never escape the system. You could, they, Jeff, you could also make the argument that it increases the volatility of the behavior of the participants that are receiving it, because now they're basically going out there to try to do the lottery ticket where, Hey, if I don't put it down on this, this is my only shot to, for making a million bucks. So I'm going to go out and buy Dogecoin, right? That's, that's all I've so, got. Yeah. NFTs. That's exactly what it's doing. Yeah. Because it is, everyone is trying to escape a system that they know has terrible exactly. consequences. And so it, 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 it forces that on society. And as it forces it on society, there's winner, there's tons of winners and losers and you lose all semblance of, of what is money in the first place. It's just yeah. a trade of our time. And so if you manipulate money, you manipulate our time. And um, so, yeah, they, this whole thing has such dramatic consequences for the world we live in and the world we're moving to. It's, uh, it, um, and it's why Bitcoin is... Um, potentially, I, and I said this a long time ago, and I, the CNBC crew took it out of me for it. Um, but uh, but I think it, uh, it, it's humanity's greatest invention, at least today. I think if we look back in time, it'll look like it'll look like that. Uh, so Tina and I were on a Spaces, and he was saying that the entire debt market's going to disappear. There's going to be no debt market. And uh, I'm I'm very hesitant to go complete binary that it's it's going to zero. I think that there's still going to be a debt market on the other side of this. Um, now, will it be significantly smaller? Absolutely. What size will it be? I have no idea. What are your thoughts on debt markets post hyper Bitcoinization? <laughs> uh, and by the way, this is a very complex topic, um, yeah. but I think uh, Tina's more right. You think it's going to zero? Not, not zero. Okay. Um, but I'm I with think, you then. <laughs> okay. So, so, um, so and, I, and I think that's actually important too, because if you, if you created a giant market, a debt market on top of Bitcoin, all you would trade is these leaders for new leaders, and nobody would ever transact in Bitcoin. 
and you'd have a system built on top of it, uh, top of it, which forced prices higher and higher, higher and higher. Um, and yes, it would pr produce a, um, a if there was this counterparty risk, it would unwind, and so it would it would. But but I suspect if you kept doing that, um, to to a great extent, you wouldn't get the transition I'm talking about. You wouldn't so, see this. So. The I, my opinion on the only kind of spot where it would actually occur is in a classic uh, founder scenario with like a let's let's go through like a venture capital thing. If, let me give you if, let me give you a better example. Let me and, and, and yeah yeah, yeah go ahead to, to to this. So let let's imagine um, that that I have a hundred thousand Bitcoin and I can lever that and I can keep levering that as much as I want. And, and other people don't, very few other pe pe uh, uh, people have that access. Could, might I as well, buy up more, more mining capacity with that scale? But uh, I can't even get, get to the point where you would have the, the ability to do that, Jeff. So like in, in my scenario, the only time that I would see somebody that would, that would do a debt deal is the the founder of a startup has basically captured lightning in a bottle and their growth rate is going through the roof right they got everybody in their kid sister with bitcoin in their pocket saying i want to invest i want to invest because i can see the growth rate and the founder goes back to them and says no i'm not going to give you equity but i will let you give me some money and maybe it's a convertible debt deal. Maybe it's it's a whatever, right? In that scenario, I can see debt basically uh, rising up in a post hyper Bitcoinization scenario. Outside of that scenario, I really haven't come up with uh, a situation where that would really happen because everybody's going to want equity. Yeah. So then, then we totally agree. So in in that case, and would I uh, would somebody give debt to that founder? And they would price kind of what is the return on, on that? It might be yeah. a higher higher rate, very high rate. Yeah, very, a very higher rate. Yeah, that that would happen. You just the debt markets would not look at it because their entire system today is the debt market. It's the credit market. It's yeah, just, yeah. It wouldn't look anything like that. Yeah, and so and, when, when when people think and remember. Um, on gold, you had to have a layer two tech, uh, which kind of turns into this credit market. Mm -hmm. And and why the, why I think inflation is so easy for us to believe that we believe in infl inflation is because of that. Because of yes, that. I agree with you one hundred percent. And 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 then you have a you have a credit based market that sits on top and 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 essentially nothing on the bottom. Yeah. And then you must have inflation. Um, to be able to make that that work, and it just gets gets away on itself. It's always just been a convenient narrative that fit because the trusted agent was required to put the currency on top of it. Yeah, exactly. And I'm with you 100. Yeah. Um, when you when you pull on that string too, though, why it's so easy to believe, um, and why it fools so many people in a population, it is we we all want not. Okay, maybe this is different on Bitcoin or specifically, but most of the population wants to believe they can get more today than they can actually get. Explain that. that. Explain what you mean by that. So governments would be forced to spend within their means, and but but you can't get elected by spending within your means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get elected by telling people that I can I can give you more. Then I can spend, spend, and then you hide that how much you're spending, and inflation, which picks the pocket of the middle class and poor to give to the rich, and, and expands government at the same time. Especially it's, if there's not term limits. It, 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 but 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 either way, like no matter what, and on top of that system, um, you don't get the truth in part. Uh, uh, no, you, you, you can't because because nobody's going to come out and say, "I'm going to spend." It, I'm going to make this right and cause a deflationary collapse, which would be the free market, which would be the free market. To, yeah, you, never going to happen. Never, it will never happen. So we want to believe in this system. We want to believe in, in Santa Claus and um, in, 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 in the system that just, it, 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 which is based on a mirage. 
But because that belief pattern takes, takes hold, people keep voting for it. They keep voting for it without even a, without even a question. Depend, it doesn't matter what side of the aisle you are. It's the same question because both sides require more printing to be able to run the entire thing. Yeah. I have to admit, him bringing it up challenged like uh, my preconceived notion of, of there being a whole lot more debt in the market. Um, I didn't think it'd be anything like it is now, but I wasn't thinking that it would be as small as kind of what we just described. Um, but having kind of thought through it, I, I, I'm with you. I think that it really is going to be pretty, It's yeah. really small, and that's actually what you want. Because what Bitcoin does, at least based on layer two, layer two is it allows for the velocity of the money to happen without the centralized control of a, that credit base system. Well, in, you, can have, you can have massive velocity of market if the money if the if the market demands it. What's really fascinating about the Lightning Network, having set up my node, and I've got I think like three hundred channels open on my node now. Um, what's What's wild is you're taking those Bitcoin, you're locking them, and people yell at me when I say locking. They say you're freeing them. <laughs> and I, I can see why they're saying it. But you're writing a contract on layer one that establishes this this IOU uh, channel between you and this other party that you don't even know who it is. Um, and then whenever you close that contract between the two of you, you adjudicate the balance between whatever the, the channel amount was. So in a, in a really weird convoluted way, I'm sure a lot of people are going to have issues with me calling that this. It's almost like you're lending or you're putting that that liquidity into the market to be bounced back and forth, but you're doing it in a way where you're not putting yourself at any type of risk outside of like uh, you know losing your keys like you do in a self custody wallet. Um, there's really no risk there, and but yet you're you're lending it out, but you always retain the same balance at the same time. It's so weird. And it's not like anything that we've ever seen in financial markets ever before, but it's like lending in a way, I guess, because those coins, because I can't go and do other things with it. Like I can't take those coins and invest them in equity and right. still have them plugged into those channels. Right. right, exactly. You can't create a whole bunch of different contracts on top of that and everything else. And That's use right. The same thing, so which, when, which puts that rigor on a financial system. So whenever I think about, so let's, let's pull the thread on this, right? So if I'm going to keep these coins in these channels, and it's the fees are only yielding. Let's say let's let's use kind of an extreme example. Let's say that the coins are only yielding a half of a percent, but we're in a post hyper Bitcoinization world where fiat's gone, right? And I can invest in equity that's kicking off free cash flows of ten percent. Am I going to keep those coins in those channels on layer two? And hell no. Right. Yeah. And, like, and, 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 and now connect to that to a different we, again, because the system change changes so much on equity markets as, as well. A lot of those equities won't yield that. There will be a race. Prices will uh, prices will keep coming down, and the market will sh market will shift. Um, so, and, what do you think the yields would be then? I'm not sure. But, uh, but but you're thinking they're way lower than ten percent. Yeah, I think I think what ends up happening is uh, over time, anyways. The, the, in 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 the transition phase, this is this is why it's so complicated because there's so much noise in the market as one system dies and another system moves on. But uh, but as prices fell throughout, just think about kind of what the world would look like on the other side, and prices are cheaper and cheaper and cheaper everywhere. And there's less jobs as well because more AI and more robotics, everything, more and more is happening through automation. Um, where would the best entrepreneurs go? Would they go to? Uh, would they attack industries that have uh, low to, uh, low returns? Or really, really? Of course or would not. They, no. Or would they attack the industries that are, have the highest uh, highest opportunity for margin capture? Yeah, a lot. And what you would see, what you would see is all of the industries that were left out of some of that would be attacked ferociously by entrepreneurs trying to give more value to society. 
yeah um, because because the market incentives force you there or, or did it be because you can make more money by doing that and then the focus of of that is going to be so much uh narrower than it was like it is now simply because you don't have all this fiat chasing every single thing yeah. out there so you're 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 only going to be investing in you're only going to find people willing to depart with their bitcoin to invest in these types of ideas unless it's got a very high probability of success at least yeah. i would that, so that, <laughs> and that's exactly i think that's what exactly what will happen will it change on the other so it might slow down even the innovation for a little bit but it won't change it at all on the other side because people will say wait that's a great idea and some of those ideas are great and they could create incredible returns and what ideas are great are the ideas that are that essentially destroy monopolies by using technology to lower the barrier cost to everybody else. In fact, if you look at Bitcoin through that lens and the monopoly being a monopoly on money, and now you've, and, and that monopoly on money costs a whole bunch of friction costs to make it work. That's all Bitcoin is. It's a technology, an open democ a decentralized network that lowers that friction cost dramatically. And, and, and as a result, the people that are most locked out of the existing system start using it. So let's, let's go back to the dichotomy between the layer two yield that you're collecting by having open channels versus the free cash flows that equity is kicking off. Uh, and irregardless of whether, or, uh, Regardless of whether you think that that is uh, a ten percent yield in equities or a four percent yield in equities, I would suspect that that layer two uh, fee is going to because you're going to have you're going to have Bitcoin that's pulled out of those channels, which is then going to increase the fee that the remaining channels are getting because now it's flowing through uh, tighter pipes, um, and then you're going to see those try to converge on each other, correct? I'm laughing because you're exactly right. It's the free market taking care of all these things. Yeah. And, and, and that's exactly what will happen. And so the price will move up on some of those channels and the price will move down on some of the other, uh, 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 or the interest rate uh, uh, will move down on some of the others or, or up if the, if the free market demands it. Um, the, the real risk-free rate will be shown all over in the market. Do you see kind of like an S&P 500 type index representing risk-free rates then at that point? Or would you see uh, it more as like the layer two? Um, I, I, think, I, I think layer two could show that. Yeah. Because I mean, you really just, you have, your risk is, is a little bit of execution risk and making sure that you're backing up the, the channels that you have right. open. And I mean... But in general, it's pretty straightforward. I would imagine most of all that's going to be very automated in the future. Um, but wow. So, yeah. so, so it's amazing though right now. You think about what you're doing, and I don't have lightning on set up yet, and, I, and I'm going to have to pick your brain on how to do that. Myself. But um, but think of what you're doing in this, and this is something I try to teach my kids and stuff. If you want to learn where the market's going, Learn Bitcoin, learn Lightning, learn Tapper, learn, learn what's happening here because the innovation that's coming on top of this. And oh, it's going to be crazy. It, it, it's staggering. There is so much, and I saw a couple of the questions, where is the opportunity? The opp I can't keep up with the opportunity. <laughs> the opportunity, it, 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 we're, we're reimagining what the world looks like. And the people who can imagine what that looks like and use technology to give more value to other people. Yeah. Have have a front seat at the table. That's what that's what an entrepreneur does. You you try to you, and and that's what technology does today. The tools to be able to deliver more value to society are staggering, and it's everywhere as as a system that looked one way is changing into a new system. So there's tons of opportunity. What's a topic that we didn't cover that you love talking about? Oh, I don't know. I think we talked. <laughs> <laughs> Were there, any, were there any were there any questions that I didn't answer on that? Oh, I got uh, yeah, I've got hundreds that have not been answered. Um, okay. But you know, in the interest of your time, I don't want to uh, 
keep you. You are way too kind. You are on vacation, sir. And I am not, <laughs> I am not going to keep you a minute more. I really appreciate you accepting the invite, even though you are out there having a good time and seeing the world right now. So thank you so much for coming on and uh, give people a handoff to your book. People, you've got to read. If you haven't read Jeff's book, I think most of the audience has. Right. And, you and all of your audience has because you, because you keep on, on saying it. But, uh, but if you haven't it. read Jeff's book, you got to read Jeff's book. Uh, give him a handoff, Jeff. Yeah, the price of tomorrow, why deflation is key to an abundant future. And it's really, we're in a system change. And most people can't see we're in a system change because they're in the system and not able to see this. So it's just an important context to what's going on. But Preston, um, one of the beautiful things about this Bitcoin community um, is all of the great minds that you get to meet through, through Amen. this. When I, when I started the journey on the book, I had to say something. I had to because uh, uh, because it, it, something wasn't being this wasn't being said. I didn't know how much my learning would accelerate as far as writing when I ended the book, and and that learning accelerated from people like you, from people in in, the, in, in this community. So just so thank you to you too, and and, and the, like it's it's sort of just incredible friends, incredible relationships yeah. that have evolved through this. So it's uh, it's been it's, what a ride. What, what a ride to be sitting what, at the front seat of this intersection. What a ride. Yeah. What a time <laughs> what a to ride. be alive. Yeah. What a time to be alive. Hey, are we going to be uh, roaming around the streets in Miami here in April or, or what? I sure hope so. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Getting lost again. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> All right. Uh, Jeff, look forward to the next chat. If we don't see each other in person, thank you so much for making time. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. Anytime. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next podcast episode and new investing resources. What are your takeaways and thoughts on this discussion? Let us know in the comments section below. 